Uh, welcome back to this next video and in this video we are going to talk about the uh, sex linked inheritance. Now sex linked inheritance means that the genes you are talking about, the inheritance pattern you are talking about that is present on the uh, sex chromosome, whether that are present on the X chromosome or that are present on the Y chromosomes. Uh, when you talk about the uh, human females, uh, the human females have got 23 pairs of the chromosomes. If you talk about the human male, human male have got 22 similar pairs, uh, which we call is the uh, autosomes and a one pair consisting of two chromosomes, but they are dissimilar in size and structure. This 23rd pair uh, in both the sexes, whether you talk about the um, females or you talk about the males, this 23rd pair in both of the sexes is called is the sex chromosome. Uh, when you talk about the uh, size and structure of the uh, pairs, there are uh, 22 autosomal pairs of the chromosome which are similar in size and structure. But when you talk about the females, this 23rd sex pair, that they, they, they are also similar in size and structure because the female have got two X chromosome. When you talk about the males, they have got one X chromosome and they have got one Y chromosome. The X chromosome is a very big chromosome and it contains a lot of genes. Uh, as compared to the X chromosome, the Y chromosome is a very small chromosome and it contains a very small number of the uh, genes. Therefore, when you talk about the sex link inheritance as most of the uh, inheritance or most of the genes that are present on the X chromosome, therefore we talk about the uh, X linked inheritance. Uh, you, you will uh, rarely talk about the uh, uh, Y linked inheritance because the number of genes on the Y chromosome, they are very small. So as most of the uh, genes and hence most of the inheritance is present on the X chromosome. Therefore, most of the time when you talk about the sex link inheritance, you will be talking about the uh, X link inheritance. When you talk about the um, X link diseases, uh, the X link diseases mean that the gene for that particular disease is present on the X chromosome. Now the uh, genes that are present on the uh, sex chromosome, uh, they show uh, inheritance pattern that differ from the autosomal diseases and you will see that in a while why the inheritance pattern that is different in the uh, sex link chromosomes or the X link chromosomes, the X link inheritance or in the uh, autosomal diseases. If you talk about the uh, differences in the inheritance pattern, the reason is that the uh, male have got only one copy of the X chromosome and the female they have got two X chromosomes. Now that means as the uh, number of the chromosome that differs in male and the female, therefore the uh, pattern of inheritance that is different in the male and the female. When you talk about the autosomal chromosomes, in the autosomal chromosome, both the males and the females have got two copies of each chromosome. Say, for example, when you talk about the chromosome number one, the chromosome number one is similar in males and the female. Therefore, the inheritance pattern that will be similar in the males and the female. But when you talk about the sex chromosomes, so is the uh, chromosome, they are different in males and females. Female have got two X chromosomes. The male have got one Y chromosome, therefore the pattern of inheritance that differs in male and female and that also differ from the uh, autosomal diseases or the autosomal inheritance. When you talk about the uh, characteristic of the x link disorders and there are some uh, distinguishing characters of the x link disorders, uh, one of the uh, distinguishing character is that the x link genes they are never passed from father to son because the son is getting the Y chromosome from the father. The son is not getting the X chromosome from the father. The son is getting its X chromosome from the mother. Now that means that the X link genes, they will never be passed from the father to the son. Another important thing is that males, they are never carriers. Uh, the concept of the carrier is that if uh, there are Two genes there are two alleles and uh, the alleles they follow the uh, inheritance they, they follow the inheritance pattern of the dominant and the recessive condition that means that if the dominant is present that means it is going to express itself in the presence of the uh, recessive allele so the carriers mean that if one copy is functional 
the other copy is not functional, that particular person is not going to show the uh, X-linked uh, uh, recessive disease. We will discuss that in, uh, in the uh, next video, what we mean by the uh, X-linked uh, recessive disorders. But males, they are never carrier. Uh, the carrier, when you talk about the uh, X-linked inheritance or the X-linked recessive disease, mean that if one functional copy is present, that particular individual, uh, the females, they are not going to show the symptom of the disease. Is the male have got one X chromosome, and if they get a mutated gene on their X chromosomes, they are going to express the uh, disease. Therefore, we say that males can never be carrier for the X-linked genes. If they have a mutated gene on the X chromosome, they have got a single X chromosome. And if that single X chromosome get a mutated gene, that particular disease is going to be expressed in the males. Females can be carrier when you talk about the X-linked recessive disorders. Uh, the females can never be carrier in the X-linked dominant diseases, but they can be carrier in the X-linked recessive diseases. Another important thing is that the males, they are hemizygous for the genes on the X chromosome. Now, hemizygous simply means half. So when you talk about the males, they have got one X chromosome, the female have got two X chromosomes, that means that the number of genes on the X chromosome that would be half in the male as compared to the female. Therefore, uh, we call that the males, they are hemizygous for the genes on the X chromosome. The X-linked uh, diseases or the X-linked inheritance that can be present in two forms. One is known as the X-linked dominant traits and the other one is uh, called is the X-linked recessive traits. So in this video, we are going to talk about the X-linked dominant traits only. Now, what is an X-linked dominant trait? An X-linked dominant trait, when a single copy of the mutated gene present on the X chromosome is enough to cause the disease in both males who have got one X chromosome or females who have got two X chromosomes. Now this simply means that if a single copy of the mutant gene is present and that the, the presence of that mutant gene is enough to express the disease in both males and the female, we call this particular trait as the X-linked dominant trait. The dominant means that it is going to express itself in a single copy as well. So the as when a single copy of the mutant gene uh, cause disease in both male and female, we call that particular trait as X-linked dominant traits. Now, they affect male and female equally as opposed to the X-linked recessive trait because if the males have got one X chromosome and they get a mutated one, and if the female have got two X chromosome, they have got a normal copy of uh, on one X chromosome, but a mutated copy on the other X chromosome, the male and female are going to express the trait. Therefore, we say that the X-linked dominant traits, they affect male and female equally as opposed to the X-linked recessive trait because in the X-linked recessive trait, when the female have got uh, one, uh, one, one uh, right copy or one functional copy of that particular gene, the female is not going to express the disease if she has the uh, mutant copy on the other X chromosome. Can you talk about the characteristic of the X-linked dominant traits again? The first important thing is that they are never passed from father to son because the uh, because the sons they are getting the Y chromosome from their father, not the X chromosome. Another important thing is that the affected male produce only affected females because if the father is affected, uh, he have got a, a mutated copy on the X chromosome. The female are getting one X chromosome from their father and if they are getting the affected copy of the uh, that particular gene on the X chromosome, the affected female are going to show that particular trait or present that particular disease because the daughter they get their X chromosome from their father, one of their X chromosome from their father. When you talk about the uh, affected females, uh, as we are talking about the dominant traits, and that means that on one X chromosome you will be having a mutant copy, on the other chromosome you may have a functional copy. So let us assume that we have a heterozygous condition, that means that the uh, female have got uh, one mutant copy that is present on one X chromosome, the other copy that is normal which is present on the other X chromosome. 
So when the affected female, they can produce 50% normal. If the uh, sons, if the affected, if the males, they are getting the normal copy of that particular gene, or they can have 50% affected uh, male if they are getting the, uh, you can say the mutant uh, copy of the X chromosome, the mutant uh, gene that is present on that particular X chromosomes. Now for the X-thing dominant traits, the females are more likely to be affected. Uh, the reason is since females have got two X chromosomes, they have two chances to inherit the, mut the mutated gene. They have the chance to get the mutated uh, copy from their mother. They have the chance to get the mutated copy from their father. Therefore, the females are more likely to be affected, more likely to be affected when you talk about the uh, X-linked dominant traits. Let us discuss an example of the uh, X-linked dominant trait. Uh, one of the important example of the X-linked dominant trait or the X-linked dominant uh, uh, disease is the Alpert syndrome. Now this Alpert syndrome uh, is also known as the hereditary nephritis. And this is uh, the Alpert syndrome is actually a genetic disorder which is characterized by the glomerulonephritis. We use this term, the glomerulonephritis, to refer to the uh, inflammation of the uh, glomeruli. Uh, usually of the both kidneys. Now what is uh, a glomerulus then? Uh, when we talk about the filtration unit of the kidney, uh, the filtration unit of the kidney is called is the nephron. And at the beginning of the nephron, uh, a network of capillaries is present that perform the first step of filtering the blood. And that particular network of capillaries is called is the uh, glomerulus. So in the Alpert syndrome, uh, this uh, network of the capillaries or this glomerulus, usually inflammation is present over there, which usually uh, leads to uh, problems. When you talk about the uh, symptoms of the Alpert syndrome, uh, one of the symptoms is the hematuria, which refers to the blood in the urine. The other symptom is the uh, proteinuria, which is the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the other symptom is the uh, proteinuria, which is actually the protein in the urine. Uh, there can, in severe cases, there can be uh, renal failure. Uh, there can be a problem with the, uh, there can be hearing loss, or there may also be effect on the eyes. So these are the uh, symptoms which you can actually see in the uh, Alpert syndrome. If you talk about uh, a little bit of history, the Alpert syndrome was first identified in a British family by Dr. Cecil A. Alpert in 1927. When you talk about the uh, genetic causes of the uh, Alpert syndrome, uh, so the genetic causes of the uh, Alpert syndrome is that there are mutations in the COL4A3, COL4A4, and the COL4A5 genes. These three genes, they are actually the collagen biosynthesis genes. So they are involved in the synthesis of the uh, collagens. The mutation in any of these genes that prevent the proper uh, production or assembly of the type 4 collagen network. When there are mutation in any of these genes, there is no proper synthesis of the uh, collagen type 4. Now, when there is uh, no proper uh, production of the uh, type 4 collagen, this type 4 collagen is actually a very important structural component of the basement membrane in the kidneys, inner ear, and eyes. Now, this me basement membrane, they are actually the thin sheets, they are thin fibrous sheets that separate and support cells in many tissues. So this basement membrane, when this is present in the kidneys, uh, it is going to support the structure of the uh, glomerulus and the structure of the kidney. And when this basement membrane is not properly formed because of the uh, uh, not, not proper formation of the type 4 collagen network, it is going to create that problem of the hematuria or the proteinuria. Now, when there are mutations in these uh, collagen biosynthesis gene, the COL4A3, COL4A4, or COL4A5 genes, that means there will be no formation of the type 4 collagens. What that means is that there will be non-functional basement membrane, and when the basement membrane is not functional, as I've told you, there will be blood, or there will be blood in the uh, urine, or there can be protein in the urine present. 
So this uh, mutation they are actually uh, leading to the uh, non-functional or the no formation of the type 4 collagen which is actually creating these problems. Uh, when you talk about the inheritance pattern, uh, the uh, condition is inherited in an X-linked dominant pattern. As I've told you, a single mutant copy is enough to uh, cause the disease. And when you talk about the Alpert syndrome, uh, that the X-linked dominant condition, that is because of the mutation in the COL4A5 genes. Uh, we are not talking about the COL4A3 or COL4A4 genes because those genes are present on the chromosome number 2. So as we are talking about the sex-linked inheritance, uh, we are actually focusing on this particular gene because the gene, uh, the COL4A5, that is present on the X chromosome. Now, uh, let us say... Um, what kind of the offspring can you expect uh, when you do a cross? For example, um, you have got an affected father. We are representing the affected uh, by uh, the small a. And we have got a normal mother uh, whose both of the genes on the X chromosome, they are normal. So what you can expect in the offsprings? So the first thing you have to do is you have to make the gametes. So when you talk about the father, the gametes of the father, the father is going to produce two kind of the gametes, the X1 and the Y1. As there is no gene present on the Y chromosome, therefore that is empty. When you talk about the mother, the mother can actually produce uh, a single kind of the gamete, both of them having the normal copy of the col 4 uh, col 4 a 5 gene. So when you are going to cross them, so say for example this side is showing you the gametes of the uh, father, and this side is going to show you the gametes of the mother. So when you cross this, if this gamete combined with this one, you're actually going to have this condition. If this can combine with this one, you're actually going to have this condition. If this combine with this one, and if this combine with this one. Now, if you look at this one, the father is affected but all of the uh, sons that are produced, they are normal because they are getting their X chromosome from their mother and the mother is having two uh, uh, and on both of the X chromosome, the mother have got uh, a normal copy of the col 4 a 5 genes. But as the females, they are getting their X chromosome from their father and the father is having uh, a mutated copy of gene on the X chromosome. Therefore, all of the, all, all of the female offspring, they will be affected. So the sons, they will be normal and the females, they will be affected because they are getting their X chromosome from their uh, father. Uh, when you talk about the uh, treatment options, uh, when you talk about the treatment of the Alpert syndrome, so the uh, genetic diseases usually, um, they are not treatable or you can say you cannot completely uh, uh, eradicate them. You only have to uh, minimize the symptoms of the disease. So the for the Alpert syndrome, there is no cure. Now the patients, they are advised on how to manage the complications because there is no proper treatment. So you have to manage the complications. Uh, for example, if there is a proteinuria, uh, there is a protein in the urine. So they are usually given the uh, ACE inhibitors and these ACE inhibitors can actually uh, minimize the proteinuria. Uh, now, once the kidney failure have developed, uh, you can go for uh, dialysis or uh, the other option is the kidney transplant. But there are problems with the uh, kidney transplant as well. The reason is because if you are going for a kidney transplant, the body may reject the new kidney as it contains the normal type 4 collagen gene. Uh, the patient do not have a normal copy of the type 4 collagen gene and if you are uh, transplanting a normal kidney it will be containing a normal type 4 collagen which will be recognized as foreign by the immune system and the immune system is going to uh, reject that particular uh, kidney. Uh, one of the most, uh, we can say, good option available for the uh, therapy, that is the gene therapy. That is one of the uh, possible treatment option. But the problem with gene therapy is that we are still in the infancy of the gene therapy and it is a very uh, expensive kind of the therapy. Uh, we'll talk about the X-linked uh, recessive diseases in the next video.